Okay, welcome. We will call to order the March 1st, 2023 regular meeting of the APCHA Board of Directors. Uh, first item on the agenda is roll call, and it's a... Uh, Kelly? I'm here. Allison? Here. Carson? Here. Rachel? Here. Is anybody on? Um, do we have Francie or John's not here or Skippy's not? Skippy, okay. So that's so, but we have a quorum. We have a quorum. All right. Uh, first, uh, next item on the agenda is public comment. We've got a three-minute uh, time limit. Um, any any public comment? Uh, if so, please come on up and. Um, Identify yourself, and you've got three minutes. Sure. Oh, there's some. Here comes John, and John's here. You're all the way over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I won't bite. And Skippy's not here. If you want that seat over there. Okay. I like Michael actually. Matthew. <laughs> you like me too. I like Matthew. Like what's his name? Go ahead. Okay, guys. My name is Tom Ringmeyer. I was here at the last meeting commenting about the meeting before last meeting, so a month ago. About you guys had considered this or throwing around this five thousand dollar thing maybe to help people make some repairs or something and just toss out so another thing popped into my head, um, because we're still looking at trying to fix uh, this roof structure thing that was, uh, in my view, not a capital improvement issue. It was, I told you before, the con poor uh, construction or poor whatever, and the, we have a walkway roof that's falling apart. I was just curious, so I was looking at the, the new rules and stuff, January 1st, 2023, about capital improvements, and it doesn't really talk about capital improvements to the building. It's, it's more about the owner's unit. It, and but it does state in there that 10 percent thing you know on the cost uh, of uh, what you might be able to tie back in to increase the value is there any consideration w you could do that in regards to the building where uh, okay so what i was getting at the 10 percent you might be able to go over that 10 percent it says depending on circumstances but say we get this building fixed, I don't know if it's going to be 100000 200000 whatever, where we could uh, divide that amongst the units and put that towards the valuation of their unit to, to get this thing fixed. Um, and that way people might be a little more enthusiastic about fixing it. Otherwise, they know they're never going to see this re a return on this chunk of change, uh, which they had nothing to do. It's not regarding a um, reshingling or new boilers or something. It's actually a structural issue that should have been caught when the place was built. But anyway, I just want to throw that out there as another idea of uh, everybody's always worried about, you know, these places not getting fixed up, capital improvements and stuff, and if you give a more incentives where they're going to see some of this back, especially where it's not, again, I'm not talking about, you know, the normal capital improvements. I'm talking about something out, out of the ordinary where they could maybe get some money back when they decide to sell. And uh, um, I was thinking that that's one idea. But it did say if you get a, for your own unit, if you get a, a uh, completion thing, something from the city regarding the construction where it shows the cost and everything mm -hmm. for your own personal unit regarding a capital improvement. You could get the money back or maybe a little more ten, than 10%, but this is probably going to be a very, very expensive fix. So, and I'm just trying to get people interested in fixing it. Otherwise, it's, it's just going to continue to go downhill. Okay. What property? Uh, 719 West Main, across from Hickory, yeah. on the Hickory corner of 7th and Main. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, thank you for coming in again and, and bringing us to our attention. Uh, this board has really held off on discussing ways to address some of the real outstanding capital problems for exterior to units uh, because we were under the lawsuit with Centennial. Yeah. And, it, it, you know, that was under a stay at that point, and they've now 
pulled the plugs and it's sure. changing. So I believe our board is going to have a chance to take a, a more direct look at that soon, and, and I hope we do, because yours is certainly not the only project that has needs. I, yeah, and I thought the only thing that might differentiate us is the fact that it's I, think I'm, I think I'm correct in the, the city didn't build Centennial. No, the city they did, did not. Where they did build ours. And, yeah. And, yeah, and I appreciate that. Uh, the other one thing I'd like to say is that regardless of what type of capital improvement, whether you're putting it inside your unit or potentially something outside, they do become depreciated back down over time. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the repair could be made, but then, you know, if someone's staying there for another 20 years, they may not really recoup it because it, the repairs would be depreciated back. Yeah, that's a more yeah, discussion. It's a, it's a yeah, small detail, yeah, but... Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. Tom. Any other public comment? Uh, any public comment online, on Zoom? If so, please unmute yourself. All right. Not uh, not hearing any. We will move to the board of directors' comments. And Kelly, we'll start with you. Okay. Um, I think it's on everybody's radar, the housing summit um, that um, Habitat for Humanity is organizing on the, they've moved the date to the 22nd. Mm -hmm. um, King County, I think, is going to sponsor some of it. I wanted to share that. Um, I don't know if we've shared that at our, an outcome from our board retreat a few weeks ago is um, consensus around pursuing a housing fund at the county um, this fall on the ballot. And so we will be working out details related to that. I'm looking for retiring city council people who want to <laughs> wish to support something along those lines. <laughs> I, I would say do it during a real election, not yeah. an off-year election, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> <clears throat> so um, I consider that progress in county commitment on the housing front. And, yeah. um, you know, the discussion there was uh, putting some guardrails around what we would support funding for, and that conversation was related to the whole spectrum of housing, so really from homelessness solutions through to senior housing, um, and um, <clears throat> with a real focus on partnering with um, our municipal um, partners on their housing plans as well, and I think that would also support, um, you know, these ongoing maintenance challenges that we have. Um, so I'll say that. Um, We've dropped the ball a little bit on one of the items coming later today related to the grant. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've, you know, when I was reading the packet today, I've sort of re-reminded our board and staff um, to talk about it during our future agendas in order for the BOCC to request to APSHA to come and present on that item so that we can entertain a matching um, funding request mm -hmm. um, so that properties in the county would be eligible for it. Um, so just sort of flagging that. I, I think our board already gave that direction. Francie had a, didn't remember that, and she's the chair who gets to set the agenda. So we're just going to revisit that conversation and then work with APSHA to find a time um, for that presentation. Um, there's a lot going on at the state legislature on housing right now. Um, I'm sure Rachel's paying attention to it, but some things I'll just flag is um, a rent control bill. Um, that has been moving through the legislature and has had hours and hours and hours of testimony. Um, state of Colorado is has in law is prohibited from enacting any rent control ordinances at any level um, in response to a case in Telluride many, many years ago. And so this is endeavoring to repeal that prohibition, which would allow local jurisdictions to determine an ordinance um, to control rent increases. And there are some guardrails that have been introduced. It's um, the governor has said he will veto it, so it's unclear if there is a majority to move it beyond a veto. Um, so that's that's one bill. There's other bills happening related to um, preventing displacement, um, rights to tenants in eviction proceedings, um, first right of refusal for local governments when multifamily properties come to sale. That um, governments would be able to. Um, match an offer um, on a on a multi-unit um, sale. Uh, there's a lot other things mm -hmm. happening in the housing front, but those are the ones that are top of mind um, right now. 
That killed. bill has a long runway for the government to, to uh, for the government to to, to to then perform. I mean, it's almost a year, I think. Before they can take the right of first refusal. No, they, I mean, they get a right of refusal. No, but actually, to perform there's been the movement about. So it's 14 days. Um, you have 14. Well, I think it's 14 days to um, indicate interest. Another 14 days to make an offer, and then 90 days. Um, to close is what I oh, heard so the amendments a, 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 a long on runway that. on it initially. Mm -hmm. It was long. It was 180 days yeah. to close initially, but I think there's been movement on that. Thanks. Yeah. Allison? Um, a note on that date change for the regional housing summit because we have in our packet that um, we won't have that option meeting because of that. Um, so just a little clarification, if not right now, um, then just in our public noticing, because if that is in fact going to be an action meeting and we'll have a second reading, so a public hearing on that date, I just want to make sure that that's um, made clear to the public. Um, and then I feel like Kelly's mentioned this recently and I, and I made faces, but I want to mention it now that I can, an election form is over and I can breathe. Um, I know one of our initiatives has continued to be transparency and communication. And I think we both um, suggested that we make ourselves available to HOAs or public outings, scheduling those kind of things. And so I don't want that to slip away. Um, what's the best way to chat about scheduling or formatting or any of that kind of stuff? We can chat anytime, Alison. I've got a, got a few things coming on, but if you want to, you know, is it on? Coffee is it or anything, on the I'm happy to do that okay. as well. Yeah. It's, it's not being worked on right now, right? It is being worked on. Oh, well then, yeah. I yeah. just love some yeah. updates. Perfect. Thank you. Rachel? Yeah, I um, just, I guess I'll comment a couple things related to what uh, Kelly has brought up. I was down in Denver week before last for Colorado Municipal League, and uh, we all look at things from a little bit of a different perspective, whether you're city or county. Um, but the, the primary uh, focus that Colorado Municipal had, uh, and it's a, a premise that I think both counties and cities share, is that local control is a predominant theme um, and not to see the state overriding that uh, consistently. But they have been talking about introducing land use changes that would supersede local control, um, like allowing accessory dwelling units by right on any single family property or uh, increasing density through the state level and things like that and you know there's maybe some places where that works well and there's other places where you're really a little concerned about that there's a lot of questions in some communities they're like we don't have the sewer lines to accommodate that much more automatic growth and other places we don't have the water to accommodate that much more growth and we've had experiences here of the the question of real utilization and enforcement and so that's something I've really wondered is who would enforce whether these are being rented uh, at any sort of AMI or are they uh, becoming short-term rentals, let alone, you know, could they become employment generators? So there's a long, long road ahead for all that sort of legislation, but people, uh, particularly resort communities and those who've been working on the ambiance or, you know, those who are in the inner fire, la fire hazard area, do you really want... Uh, that sort of thing. Do people get an off-site parking place automatically on your lawn or, or is it just more trouble for off-street? Uh, so it's really, uh, I don't think it'll go very far in its own way, but uh, they're, they're struggling to find ways to help. And I think the mayor of Breckenridge sent a nice letter to the legislature and he said, really, we can do it. We just need more money. We don't need you to try to change our zoning rules. So, um, there was that one. And then on the right of first refusal, I don't know that CML was particularly supportive or, or happy about that one. It, and and you know, I had raised the idea of, well, wait a second, you could have a, a contract that says this is worth $8 million and you better buy it now or I'm going to turn it into this for $8 million, and the government reacts or they don't react. And then suddenly that $8 million offer went away. <laughs> You know, it's kind of a little bit of a shoot the puppy. You know, if you don't pay what this buyer who was a friend of mine, I, I, I'll let him out of the contract for free if, if it don't go through, but I'm at least going to tell the government we're going to turn that nice thing into 
something they don't want, it, you know, it could, the multifamily home is now going to be a single family home or whatever. So we were really concerned about how that could get played um, by a lot of people and, you know, whether governments really can act fast enough to make the closing dates and things like that. Uh, and how does it interfere with the marketplace? So people were not really particularly enthused with that one. I, I don't know where it's going to go either. So that's about all I have. I know no real city updates per se. Wouldn't tables play a big part in that? Taxpayer bill of rights. It, it would all depend on. Right, on because if you wanted to buy a twenty million dollar multifamily apartment building in Aspen, yeah, <laughs> you got to figure out how to pay for it. You right? have to figure out how to pay for it, and so some people may already have funds. Mm -hmm. Others would have to do a bond or a question. You can only do those at certain times. Well, that's where I thought the long runway came in to play was trying to. Yeah, but. Allocate funds, you know, and it gets really funds. tricky. You know, again, even the short runway of where do interest rates go in the meantime? Someone thought, oh, we can make the purchase for this amount, but now we can't. You know, it's just very, very tricky stuff. We're, we 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 weren't sure that that's where we need to go. Thanks, Rachel. John, I had something on Monday, but I can't remember what it was. So, <laughs> <laughs> if it comes so no back, comment. If it comes back by the end of the meeting, you yeah, exactly. <laughs> come up with it. <coughs> okay, and uh, I n nothing to add for me. So we'll go to the uh, executive director updates. Matthew. Hey, good, good evening, everyone. Um, just following up on what Kelly was saying about the uh, the housing summit, it's solving the housing crisis, a regional summit on equitable solutions, and that is on March 22nd at the Aspen Meadows. So it's a date change and a venue change. Um, and I sent everybody the information on that, including the link to register. Uh, it's up to you guys individually to register if you do want to attend. Uh, most of the APSHA staff will be there, and it should be it should be very interesting. So, if you have any you know, any other details you'd like, just let me know. But that's um, that should be good. And I'm happy to say we are going to be we have hired a new the compliance manager position. That person starts April 3rd. I'll bring her along to a to a meeting uh, very soon after that, and so she can introduce herself. But we are we're very very lucky to have a highly qualified um, person taking that job, and I think you'll all be thrilled. And we also have a new admin person, Michael Healy, who has joined us, and so we are very close to being uh, more or less fully staffed, which is great. Very good. Which is great. And then following up on what uh, Allison was saying. We have penciled in, and we're still tying it down, April 11th for a uh, tenant meet and greet for Truscott and ACI, and we're going to have donuts and coffee. And then I was originally going to have that, that date be an HOA coffee, but uh, the numbers don't quite work, so I'm going to do a smaller HOA coffee, and I'm thinking probably the week after. I want to try and squeeze in some of that stuff before everybody leaves um, mm -hmm. but if there you know other things we want to do that's just the first of many but that's that's what we have planned right now and that is what we have great oh. John. so yeah my comment was more and just rely we, we talked about the affidavit you know a couple meetings ago mm -hmm. um, and my question was and I and, and I didn't know the answer to this but audits what what are we doing for spot audits that will control? that is going to be very much part of the new compliance person's portfolio you know we're not going to audit everybody because then it's not an audit it's just everything but yeah that's very much going to be when we're building up the position and when we've talked to this person that is an example of something we'd like to be doing and we also want to track the results of the audit so we have a better idea of what is going on so it isn't just a particular person but we also can build out statistics on compliance but yes well, that's another thing to report on our website yes. right is we audited 10 10 owners this month or whatever yeah. the number right. is whatever our goal is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we, these but were the that's results. what we want to do is we right. want to set a goal i think of like ten, at least 10 audits a month something like that okay. so thank yeah. you thank you okay thanks uh cindy notifications on available rental and sale units I do know that we we are going to be having some rental some ownership units come up. Um, Pam was is working on that. I don't have the list of that, but again, please, um, if you're interested in rentals for the properties that we manage or ownership units, again, go to our website 
um, AVSHA.gov, and sign up for notifications. There's a button in the middle that says notifications, and there's a lot of things that you can sign up for. So again, uh, just a reminder to go ahead and do that. Thank you, Cindy. Um, Thank you. Kelly. Sorry. Thank you. Um, I did want to revisit. So um, the city and the county have, have not been able to decide upon a alternate citizen board candidate. Um, and so one of the things that we were talking about in the county is p perhaps revisiting the large number of applicants that we received when um, John and, and Carson and um, initially, I think, were um, appointed. Um, so I just wanted to sort of float that to Rachel and maybe we'll get that moving through the city okay, and the sure. county um, either I don't know if we want to just revisit that list and see if we can decide on that list and invite that person or if we want to have our admins go back out to that list but figure out some coordination there because there really was an incredible pool of candidates that I think so um, would be a nice a good way for us to kind of close it's this loop. Posted like this. I would have to check. I'm not sure. I, we we advertise regularly for the openings. Because <coughs> I was just talking to somebody on the phone before. I got over here. Yeah, I, no, it, it, it would was. Be, yeah, I think it is. It, as I, I think it is. A week ago, two weeks ago. I think we're looking for other boards mm -hmm. as well. So we're okay. probably still. If, if I see that and I see that we're missed, I contact them and say, <laughs> just remember that we have still have an alternate position available too. So we got a watchdog. <laughs> <laughs> so if that yeah. is that. I think I'll talk to our staff and maybe we'll get the option city <laughs> to revisit that list. Does that sound good? Pardon? Does that sound good? Yeah, I, okay. I can I can ask okay. them. About that. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is the consent calendar. It's uh, one item minutes of the February fifteenth, twenty twenty three. Meeting. I was not at that meeting, so I'm not going to make a I motion. I will move, move. I will motion to approve the minutes. Got a motion to approve from John. A second. Second from <coughs> Kelly. Any discussion or amendments? If not, uh, it's a roll call vote. Okay. Uh, John. Yes. Rachel. Abstain. I wasn't there. Okay. Carson. Yes. Uh, Allison. Abstain. And Kelly. Yes. Okay. Uh, get the first reading of resolution number two, series 2023, approving an amendment to the Aspen Picking County Housing Regulations and adding the right sizing pilot program. Do you want to have a motion and then a second of discussion? How do you want to go about it? Um, I guess yeah I guess we, we can have um, maybe Cindy and um, I mean if we're doing the, the reading I, I, I would motion to read she would read it then we'd have discussion then if there's a motion and further discussion right. okay I would move to read uh, resolution number two series of 2023 approving an amendment to the Aspen Picking County housing regulations adding the right sizing pilot program We've never read the whole resolution right. before. Well, it's second. just the title. The type. Okay, yeah. perfect. That for the reading. Uh, okay. it, it, and we got a second. Okay. okay. And then all in favor of reading. <laughs> John. Aye. Rachel. Aye. Allison. Yes. Carson. Yes. Kelly. Yes. Resolution number two, series of 2023, a resolution of the Aspen Picking County Housing Authority Board of Directors approving a pilot right sizing program as an amendment to the APSHA regulations. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, is there any discussion on this or questions for staff? Allison? Um, a couple things, and I think it probably is better to have it general in the regulation and um, then more specific as the program grows for things like you know applications as determined by option language like that but um, I had a couple questions sorry let me get my windows in order um, one is just kind of the the application of this so once it passes is it you know because it's such a limited opportunity and I think especially for the first one um, that I'd like there to be like a date that it starts that the public has been made aware of 
when it does. Um, so I don't know that that actually needs to go in the regulation, but was that discussed um, last meeting? How, you know, it, it's gonna, like, there's gonna be a rush on the concert tickets, and I just wanna make sure there's equal access. Yes, yeah, we'll make. Yes, we will. I, Allison, we certainly will put a date out there as soon as I know whether this is going to a second reading on the on next meeting that, that we have. It's very easy to push out a date, hmm. um, but this is the way that was advised for us by Tom to go and to get it into the regulation, so this is what the path we're taking. So I just, I don't know a date, so I need to be, fair with a date once I've figured out how tonight goes. That makes sense. And I don't think it belongs in, a, in our new, you know, updated regulations because it's a one one off. Tom, Tom was the one that directed yeah. us to put it in the regulations. The, the actual he date. He felt it was better. It no, okay. and you're right, the date. It does the after public, after the public hearing, it immediately is, can, can okay. go into um, effect, effect af, right after the public comment or the um, public hearing. So that is with all of our regulations. Once we've held that public hearing, it does it can go into effect right away. But I think we would. I, it, I my understanding is we want a specific date that we actually launch it. Great. So um, that can be added at second reading. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do we need? We don't need a date in. I don't think the we need a date in the regulations, but we we'll can just, maybe have will, a date. We will say this mm -hmm. is okay. this is when we're doing at it. at public hearing. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and this is kind of along those same lines, but I, I know in the regulations it is not, APT is not taking the ownership of being the matchmaker, but I just want to clarify that there will be some sort of list or, you know, like once you've applied, are, are we doing something where you can um, indicate interest even though you have not contacted every person in this system to find out if they are your perfect match? Like, will we at least have a board, uh, an interest board where you, then, yes, the, the private, two people can match make themselves it, it won't be public facing allison if that's kind of what you're getting at but it will be that if someone were to say that they're interested in downsizing we could provide contact information for those looking to upsize but it's not going to be just on our website with a um you know all the folks contact information who's looking to do the switch even like a two three bedroom looking for one like yeah. Okay. Um, it, that sounds like you're you're gonna have to take on a little more than you want, or than what is said in the regulation as far as helping with that matchmaking. But I do want to just make sure that it's not um, only available to those who are best connected or who have already kind of been scheming this. That it again is just an equal access program because it is so limited, um, so that everyone who is interested in going one direction or the other is able to find out who might be their good match. And I'll just add too. At the last meeting, the discussion we had was on, on the number of how many we were going to do. Yeah. And right. So I think the consensus was that if we if we set this up and the five are gone like that, we're going to be talking about a second. You know, do we do a second round and, and having that discussion? Quickly. Yeah. And it, and I, I think that's well worded in the regulation. Yeah. The after board can increase right. that yeah. number. Um, yeah. I just don't want it to be down to who, who's who, who knows who. Mm -hmm. I want it to be, um, even if you're not very well connected, if you have a house that would be great for this program, that you have a way of, of being part of it. Yeah. That's a, a great thought. And um, Bethany, this would be something more for you to consider as a follow-up to Allison's comment. Would it be possible to set up a, um, a page or web that that you only had access to if you had listed your home as one that you're interested in trading. Yeah, so, so, that, so that the only, the only people, who, yeah, so it's not public facing, you'd have to have an access code and you were given the code because you had put your unit up as a potential swap. Rachel, that's above my uh, expertise. I'm certain, I'm certain it's possible. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think we can work through it and even sharing um, the document or, you know, the contact of those, I, I think is going to be manageable and not something that's, um, you know, it's up to yeah. them to reach out and have the conversation. It's just up to us, up to us for us to provide the information. I guess yeah. it's just such a point in time like that. If you're the first one to apply and you ask who's, who's looking to upsize, I'm ready to downsize and no one's listed yet then you know it would be great if it was something that was accessible as it was updated um, and again I think that could be even just numbers a cat three three bedroom looking for 
a two bedroom. Um, and then, so if, if, the, if privacy is the issue here, um, so that you could see if there's anything that even match what you're allowed to do. Yeah. Tom? Unmute, Tom. Can you unmute, Tom? Yeah, so, you know, this is a good point. Maybe it makes sense to put in here that, that um, with APTU will maintain, that APTU would maintain a list of, of persons who have inquired about participation in the program, um, provided that those, those people want their names to be disclosed. Because APTCHA is the logical place for people to try to find a, find a co-applicant, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not going to want to put an ad in the paper. <laughs> so may, maybe we could add here that people can provide, voluntarily ask for inclusion on a list that would be made available to the public of persons who are interested in finding a co-applicant. Well, Something like that. Thanks, Tom. I like that. To me, it, you know, I think there's going to be, you know, on one side there's going to be a desire to upsize, on another side there's going to be a desire to downsize with, and probably both, but with some caveats, right? Like I want to live, I, I would live Where? here but not here. I would do this but not this. And so some of it is, is I think you've got, <laughs> you've got to match people up and go, oh, i got a five-bedroom house, but I want to go to a two-bedroom and I want to live. <laughs> I, I was wondering about whether the complex name maybe no no one's address but the complex name needs to be listed because otherwise you'd look at some and say oh, you know oh you live there click <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we don't want that to happen um you know so i i think where we're at is that the intention is there and the desires there and what we want to see is there and then we're talking about some mechanics and logistics on this and that that was actually the other point i was going to bring up is that you know, um, our uh, com dev department had a pretty miserable experience with the um, limited number of demo permits and how applications came in and things like that. And so I think it, um, similar to exactly what Allison was saying, it's going to be something we really need to think through once it is opened up, the day it opens up, um, is it become um, the first applicant in at 801 or is it more all the applications that are received in the first day and we weigh them by how many bedrooms are gained or something like that. Yeah, Bethany sat down with Comdev. Okay, yeah. so you've um, cleared that up. I, yeah. And Rachel, I brought to the board last time the opportunity to do a lottery every two months and that was turned down. Um, I did sit down with Comdev to try to learn best practices and so I did present a lottery and, and the board said no, they wanted to go ahead and do um, you know, the first five matches that we could make with the opportunity to open it up to an additional group based upon your recommendation as interest comes in. Um, so we certainly tried to get lessons learned from ComDev with demolition permits. And um, so we're gonna go with the first five that come in and we'll do it in an equitable manner and, and come back to the board if more units are necessary for this pilot program. Okay, well, thank you for that, and I apologize for having missed on that. I mean, but I look at that. No, you're, you're fine. Matches aren't like getting in line to get my demo permit, right? right. This, no. There's two people right. involved here they are going to have right. to agree. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, so. I, I, hope, I hope that is the case. You know, I think I, there'll be five of those ready to go day of. I think some people um, have already been working on it. <laughs> and, no, and so I guess the thing is, like, is it the time stamp on your email, but then staff looks through it, and you actually didn't have all your paperwork, blah, blah, blah. Are you still first place? Or is the timestamp on the first person who had a complete application, they get a, you know, because there there are like robo ways to do this, and I don't want to go to, like, you know, I do think once we open it, we'll know, right? Like we'll see some things. I don't want to imagine every scenario, but I appreciate you bringing up that um, similar ex example. And and just as far as like the intent versus the language, Tom, I do appreciate that since right now we do have this sentence in the regulations, the APTRA is not responsible for identifying matching co-applicants. I think that's fine, but I think saying something along the lines of what Tom said, where in that same section or we add a letter, um, APTRA will provide or maintain, you know, interested. 
Well, whatever information APSHA has has to be equally available to everyone. Right. It can't be, oh, we got a new one today, but we're not telling the past 20. And, and no one would do that here, but it's how do you set up the mechanics so that it flows smoothly yeah. and nothing falls through the cracks. I mean, we're skirting the lottery process, which we know for like RO stuff, there is that back end worry that there's other handshakes going on. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's why I'm worried that um, there might be ways of getting into this in a, you know, cleverly and that the, the person who's just not well connected or hasn't thought that way or doesn't have the extra under the table cash won't, won't feel like they had access to it. Unfortunately, we can't stop that if people can pick who they want to do it with, and that's exactly what could happen. And I'll tell you, we, the, we didn't want the onus put on us to find these matches. No, I did that's not think it should be. so much more work for us right. that I would rather not even do this if that's the case because we're trying to make it to where the onus is on them to find who they can match up. We are laying the groundwork. This is what they have to qualify by. You find somebody like this, fantastic, come to us. I realize you guys think there's gonna be a ton. Mm -hmm. I don't. Yeah, I just think if you're a retiree and you have you know, room to, you want to downsize and your you social downsize, circle but if is I retirees to downsize, and they don't wanna yeah. trade with you, who wants to trade with mm -hmm. you is a young family and that might, might not be who mm -hmm. you know and stop on the street and start talking, right. you know, and so, it, like how if we're trying to encourage participation but we're limiting the knowledge of like but but then APSHA has in their knowledge a group of people who are looking to upsize like why I, I think that yeah. facilitation is helpful yeah and I, I mean I think if, if you had a I mean the reality is, is if you've got somebody in to use the five bedroom example who's looking for a two bedroom right they may know somebody who who has a two bedroom and they're kind of thinking about it but if there's you know five other two bedrooms they can look at maybe that helps get you know helps get it across the line so i mean yeah. certainly I, I don't think there's anything wrong with just having a sign up of people to come in and sign up um, i've got a two bedroom looking for three or whatever yeah 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 people can set their own privacy levels at a certain point you know and and maybe that's where you can leave a thing blank if you don't want to put down your phone number or but you know if you don't know what complex or hoa it's in you know, you're really just shooting in the dark, you know, uh, at, at the beginning. Um, the other thing I don't know that we're addressing, uh, I think we have addressed, but it's, it might come up again in this. Um, what if one of the sellers offers the other partner in the deal some down payment assistance to help them get their new loan or offers them, uh, we'll help you with your closing costs since you have to still pay your 2% to sell the place and we know that's a barrier to you. You know, that's someone getting extra money on their sale above their appreciated value. But if that is what makes a transaction happen, I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking of the, the free market <laughs> where someone trying to sell a unit sometimes says, yeah, well, I'll give you 5000 towards your moving costs or I'll pay your closing costs or, or the seller will ask for something or vice versa. And um, I, I suppose as it's kind of been said, if the, you know, how, how do we keep this from being a uh, pay-to-play game where someone can say, I'll give you 20000 under the table if, or I'll leave all the furniture for you, mm -hmm. you know, if you, if the... So, I mean, kind of just like coming back to a previous discussion we had on the affidavits, I mean, I think Tom had said un unless it was a, a notarized affidavit, basically, that there's not really a whole lot we can do. I mean, what if the, for the people doing it, we have them sign some sort of a notarized affidavit that there are no funds yes. exchanged outside of this transaction so that if in the event we do discover yep. that there were it's a it's a criminal it's a you know referral to the uh to the da I, mean, I, would, I don't know i feel like our regulations already cover that in terms of our requirements for any approved sale i don't you know it's it's okay to reiterate that i'm not sure our regulations anywhere talk about like furniture you know, they don't talk about like improvements that nobody went to APSHA to get added on. Yeah. You know, like those are all kind of things that the regulations are silent towards. So I, I'm, I be, I'm a bit of the mind of like, whatever the regulations silent towards now, like we can maintain that. And if the regulations are have already specifically called out these under the table deals, like we can reiterate that here. Um, and think you know, it, whether yeah. we it just, need to it mechanize just, it, I, you know, I don't think we yeah. mechanize it in our current sales now anyway, but they're in our regulations. And um, there, are, there are times <clears throat> at closing 
where there's a, like an inspection item or something like that and they've come to a resolution where somebody will say I'll pay your closing costs and you take and you don't make me do this mm -hmm. and that has happened the, it used to be where you could actually do a pretty big credit you can't anymore because of banking laws you can do as much as like if somebody's closing costs are three thousand dollars you can't go above that right so um, it, it is kind of limited in that but we have allowed that has been allowed on a lot of sales that we've done yeah I you know I'm just looking for preventing any big fish I'm not yeah, worried sure. about any of the small well, fish. and I get that the incentive here is you're not in the bid process that's, right like yeah. that's that's valuable but <laughs> but you know if there's a limited number of those four bedrooms and the limited number of yeah. the two bedrooms you know side deals happen they have happened before regardless of our regulations to me the idea of signing something new acknowledging that in this unique transaction that's exempt from lottery you, you, you're you're just acknowledging that this never happened it, you know th this is this is part of it I, I, it should it's yeah I'm when you when you that. do closings you sign like a million forms to begin with so I don't it would just be one more attesting to the truth mm -hmm. and, and I, I think and it's it would a good it safeguard would, it would increase the penalty if, if we did find it. it would give teeth to enforcement right. if we did it in addition I mean, to the assumption I would think is that you would you could identify some of these things through your asset right. <laughs> um, yeah. revelations anyway um, but yeah yeah well I, I, I think it'd be a worthwhile addition to the, the process I agree um, can I make just another comment? I just have some language things that I don't think should, hopefully not too objectionable. I, I would, I want to change in 2E where it says all approved swaps. I think we should call those exchanges, um, just to be consistent with how we refer to the program in the preceding paragraphs. And then there was something else I was going to add, but I forget. So let me see if I can think of it. So when we when we do bring this back for public hearing, the any suggestions that you might guide, that you the board wants us to add to this, we can go ahead and add to this, like keeping a list of uh, interested households, um, having an affidavit that they need that each entity needs to sign that no cash is changed, no additional cash is changed um, outside of the sale. Um, change that to exchanges, and if, if there's something else that you want us to add, we, you, can, you can go ahead and approve this at first reading with the changes that you want to do to it, and we can then and then it'll be all incorporated when we bring it back for public hearing. Okay. I would say cash or items of material value. Or I don't know. I just leave the keys in the car. <laughs> yeah, <Right>. exactly. <laughs> Like your First convertible looks road. pretty nice. Yeah. How about? <laughs> <laughs> um, and I guess I would just comment. You know, I I understand the the issues that the city had with the demo um, lotteries. I see these. I want to just keep these as separately. Yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I don't want to do. because to me they're very. You know, they're so different in what we're trying to accomplish here. Like our reasons for a limitation in number is. To, to manage, you know, administratively manage a pilot program, not to minimize impact on the community. Yeah. Um, so I just think they're very, very. Okay. Different. Well, I, I'm just hoping it all works out well mm -hmm. the first yeah. day and they don't say, well, we have eight people we have to turn down yeah. because we'll, you know, until, and, you know, but again, we can expand the program. I, I, I agree with that. I, mean, I hope we have 10. No, we have 10. <laughs> well, and if we do, it, it's, it's, it really is, say, we got more than what we ever thought. These look like really good fits. We suggest we go ahead and do the ten. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, I yeah. fully agree. <laughs> well, I feel like <clears throat> you know you talk about a database of households, right? You know that swap board list doesn't need to be names and numbers. It needs to be addresses and and properties or addresses and characteristics of the property that that somebody wants to exchange out of. And I don't right? know if you it should have a specific it should just be address. Like maybe. Well. You, address complex, complex whatever complex but it needs to be sense. somewhere where somebody that wants mm -hmm. to swap or exchange whether it's down or up they can identify and go yeah I, I would live in that property yeah. another thing I, I did I wanted to bring up that I'm just remembering is um, I wonder if there needs to be some language related to 
specific qualification characteristics. Um, you know, like I was like, well, what if someone at like Basalt Vista tries to exchange with somebody? Like Basalt Vista has specific workforce right. requirements, right? It's not totally open. Um, <laughs> Well, that to the broader APSHA yeah. qualified community. We'll, so we'll I, I think that's, you know, and I don't, yeah. I know there's more instances than just that, well, but, you, you know, you, those you, kind of things. That it's we a good point. I mean, of. if you had a handicap unit and you're a handicapped person and you're mm -hmm. going to exchange it to someone who's not handicapped, mm -hmm. that, 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 you know, that would be different. Mm -hmm. You know, that those ones are a priority in the system to handicap people. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, good point. Do we, um, at, does APSHA have access, do you send out press releases at times? Um, we have, but yeah, we will we'll publicize this, yeah. I think, just and we'll talk to our esteemed colleagues from the fourth estate about it, it as well. It would be so yeah. cool for it to be explained so well yeah. in the newspaper ahead of time yeah. that everyone, <laughs> 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 I, I think this, this does, if it's, if it's the kind of thing where it's going to go into effect yeah. upon yeah. that reading, which means applications are open on the Thursday morning, um, I would love for it to have yeah. been explained mm -hmm. to the public, not just to come and give their public right. comment that yeah. day, but, um, that this program opens tomorrow and here's how it works. Yeah, we'll, we'll, well, once we set a day and everything, we'll talk to our colleagues over there and make sure that they wrote yeah. a lovely story about it. And, yeah. and these guys said well, on second reading, yeah. we can say it will start two weeks from now. We don't, it's not right. to start the right. Thursday morning. It doesn't morning start instantly. Yeah, it'll start the when day we, we, say say it, when we say it does. As we pass this gives us some the authority, but then we'll actually action it a little bit later and make sure it's all rolled out properly. I would make a motion to um, approve on first reading, where did the number of that one go? Uh, resolution number one, series of 2023, approving changes to the Aspen Picking County housing regulations for the purpose of the right sizing program. With oh, it's number two. I'm number sorry, two. I said the wrong one. Yeah, it's number two. With the changes yeah. suggested by yes. the board? With the um, changes uh, suggested additions. by the board to be reviewed at second reading. I'll second. Okay, it's a roll call vote. Okay. I, 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 okay. I, I hate to interrupt, but Carson? Um, yes, sir. The motion should include the date of the public hearing. Uh, public hearing scheduled for April 5th, 2023. Right. That's acceptable to the maker of the motion. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Second. Second. Okay. John? Aye. Rachel? Aye. Carson? Yes. Allison? Yes. Kelly? Yes. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Great. I'll be Next fine. item, we've got Liz with uh, Review Capital Maintenance Grant Program. Just sharing the memo. Um, Who is this on? Board has a memo. All right, great. Yeah. Hi. Hi, everybody. Happy Hi. Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, Liz Axberg, Housing Policy Analyst for the City of Aspen. So today we are revisiting the Home Repairs Pilot Grant Program again. Today we're going to be talking about the different additions and alterations we've made since the last discussion, and see what other feedback you all have. So the main additions that I've made since the previous discussion in February is that we really clearly outlined the program goals, as you asked, which we'll go over. And then we also limited the eligibility requirements as well by category. So I'm just going to go through it piece by piece for the program to highlight each change we've made. And after each change, you're welcome to ask questions or provide feedback. But then at the end, of course, we'll have time for discussion. So the three main goals of this program are first to just test the internal processes of a processes of a home improvement program at APSHA. The pilot really gives us the opportunity to learn how this, pro this type of program would really function for our staff, for our software like HomeTrack, and 
That way we have a foundation down the road to possibly expand out into a larger capital improvement program for Apsha properties. So the pilot program is really a great opportunity for us to just learn about how we can run a capital improvement program. Second, measuring the need. Throughout this, we're gonna be able to collect a lot of data, like what types of repairs people need, who needs the repairs. We also would be able to know like if there's specific properties or communities that need more aid as well. And we'd also be able to collect a list of who's doing the repairs for our APSHA um, owners as well. So it just allows us to have a benchmark. What types of repairs are being needed in our APSHA ownership properties and who needs them? And then that way we'll have a lot more information as we improve the program down the road as well. And then thirdly, it's just supporting aging properties in the APSHA inventory. There's a lot of properties that need a lot of assistance in our ownership inventory and this program helps support capital improvements being made and also it just, well, it just provides an incentive for people to make these necessary repairs and also not cost burdening owners with repairs as well. And also um, another addition I add to this is that it might be able to help owners make a more environmentally but a little bit more expensive repair as well. So like maybe if they need to replace their boiler, now they can afford the little bit more environmental option that maybe they couldn't afford without assistance as well. So those are the three highlighted goals that I outlined from last time. Is there any questions about those three before I keep going? Okay, well then let's continue. So the next change that we made was limiting this program to categories one through three. We also slightly changed the percent matches that owners are required to have on the repair. The reason we limited it to categories one through three is because there was concern about if we were serving the right people. We also made a change to this where we aren't gonna require people to fully requalify as well. Mm -hmm. So this means we'd only be looking at their income. So they'd be submitting like W-2s or 1099s in a recent pay stub. So it wouldn't take assets into account. The reason we did this was to really make the process hopefully a little bit faster, especially if people are in need of essential repairs and a lot of those are gonna have a time component to them, where, whether or not they need that repair or not. So we made those changes as well. Any questions there? Okay. Awesome. Sorry. Um, two, one, is, don't we have very, very, very few Cat One ownership units? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. Yeah, so I mean, this would definitely like narrow the pool a lot for Essentially, people Essentially, this is the eligible. program for CAT 2 and 3. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. um, just to point that out, I guess that uh, we've kind of, we're, we're spotlighting them. Secondly, I and I know we do this all the time, um, updating the deed restriction to a current APSHA deed, um, aren't there some mm -hmm. properties where, like, their HOA has specific things of, like, who, how, how it's decided who comes in next? There's, there's some that are... Um, like you wouldn't really be able to just update yours, you'd have to update your entire complexes. I don't know oh. of any that are like that. for ownership, so. it's just your, yeah. it's on you. There's like two weird ones right up by, um, oh my God, just this, not, not Red Mountain, but over, I thought we're like, <laughs> the deed restriction is something where if something opens. Oh, you're thinking of Common House. Independence Place. Am I? Because it was a co-housing, co and peop housing, people right. who have done work there yeah, on a volunteer have basis a have a, yeah. a priority list. So, like, if someone in that unit, or you know, one of those units wanted to take advantage of this, and they would still do that because okay. that doesn't affect that. What, the only thing that that affects is the sale of the unit. Okay, which is not an option deed restriction thing for our other program. Because um, they do have a list of associate members that have a right of when something goes up for sale, the associate member the pool has the right as long as they meet the, the top priority requirements. So 
Uh, but it doesn't affect if they're doing capital improvements or anything on their okay. unit. Okay, their updated yeah. APSHA mm -hmm. restriction would not right. oh, supersede right. that it could still, it goes to this limited pool mm -hmm. first or something. Okay, yeah. um, thank you. <clears throat> All right, we'll keep going. Uh, the eligible repair list didn't change much besides adding window repairs to the list as well. And again, as people submit a request or um, a grant, request they actually will have the will be able to decide whether or not that repair is eligible for the program and that will really be based off this list plus the definition of essential repair so necessary to improve the health and safety for residents in the household we are also keeping the funding request the same so that means that funding will serve a smaller pool as well and depending how today's discussion goes and discussions down the road we will request funding from both City of Aspen and Pickin County so it can serve all APSHA ownership properties. And lastly, I really want to emphasize the program evaluation aspect of this as well in that we are going to be collecting data throughout and at the end supplying an impact evaluation to the board as well so that way we can say how many people we served, the cost of all the repairs made through this program and all the different types of repairs that were made the different contractors that people went through as well and so that way we have a better idea of how to conduct this type of program moving forward in an informed way are these these the eligible repairs mm -hmm. to me they should be things that really add no value but improve livability improve you know some you know you got a heating issue you fix it property but I mean, to me that's not a value add right right so we're spending five grand as you're not really getting credit on your mm -hmm. property value for it window repairs you know roofing so I mean are we ensuring I mean that's how we're seeing these repairs is something that absolutely needs to be taken care of but truly is not a value add to the unit definitely it's to to help them make those repairs like they like a broken window or leaking windows or things like that would be eligible like we aren't going to be paying for people to just replace their countertops with something nicer yeah oh, but that shouldn't be a value add either no <laughs> no it's not. but it's only they're functional i was, yeah, I was just gonna say if, it, if the floor is get holes in it you can replace it but if it, you just don't like the tile color you can't yeah it's like that and that's why like it went through like the application process like there will be specific questions to describe the issue and that yeah. way, APSHA staff can make like, a c correct yeah. call on what type of repair it is. I wonder if we should add, in addition to roof, maybe ceiling hazards? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, sometimes the roof is damaged to ceiling. Or that's yeah. That's for sure. Or sometimes you're in a multi-unit yeah. and you're, it's your ceiling, not your roof. I mean, I think <laughs> those are the, more the kind of repairs I had in mind more than the furnace or water heaters. I mean, those are... Roof hazards. I would add ceiling to yeah. Lower ceiling. I mean, like the okay, the roof is leaking, uh, and you fix the roof, right? But maybe you don't have the money to have somebody fix the ceiling. Like, I would. Th that's a good use of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to start with the roof. Yeah, I, <laughs> I guess what I'm saying though is I agree. I agree. Mo more towards that type of thing than I mean the, mm -hmm. the water heater went out. Like, yeah. Um, okay. The other thing I would note that you can get as a goal on this would be uh, a better understanding of the cost of repairs. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. uh, what what yeah. are contractors mm -hmm. charging? That's a great and, and and is it eighty dollars an hour, or hundred and fifty an hour? Is it you know what are materials costing nowadays? So I think we really you know we'll get their receipts anyhow. But it'd be nice to get them. At, but th that would be a huge help to all of us. She has that in number two. But maybe it needs its own. This well, would give us more insight on how much those repairs cost. Yeah, we could flush that out a little bit because obviously yeah. we'll be collecting data on yeah. how yeah. much these repairs cost since people have to submit their invoices at the end yeah. as well. Yeah, so. I, I think that's a great thing to be well, tracking. Does that go to more than just one contractor bid? Well, we haven't, I, I don't know that we've set up a multiple that you have to come in with more than one bid. We haven't well, set no, it up that We're not getting in the back but at this point. You know, see, to me, that's where it's ripe for some kind of yeah, yeah, uh, fraud, well, whatever you want to call it, step by step, Joel. 
because we all have we, mm -hmm. we all have friends that are contractors, yeah. and somebody comes and gives me a bid f for a five thousand dollar bill. That's a two thousand dollar actual repair mm -hmm. cost. Yeah. You're getting well. The, the, as APTCHA is okaying these, th there should be some protocol within, as you're talking about, because we are doing home inspections now, and we have home inspectors, and they should sure. be able to say, is this within the range, the range or the ballpark the cost, or yep. not? So. Reasonability test. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, the only thing I would say on the more than one bid is, um, I mean, anybody who's tried to get any work done, it's hard to get one bid. <laughs> right, it right, it really is. Yeah. And, and anyone saving their percentage is going to try and get the best bid that they can and make mm -hmm. our, our money go as far as they can. But, um, no, it's a great point. It has to be checked for reasonableness. The one thing I hate to hate to bring it up, but I, I will, um, is should we consider any sort of payment program if people say, I, I need that new roof and I'll pay my 800 but I don't have 800 right now. And we could say, well, you can pay it off over six months or 10 months to APSHA, but do they have to have the 800 in hand to start the I mean, project? as written, yes. Yes. And that's a great add-on maybe for, for later. For to think about. But, okay. I mean, I, I, th I, I, don't, yeah. I, I don't want to get into that, and, but I'm, I'm just thinking. I struggle with that. I, 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 I yeah, that, that's a whole different thing. Because think about it. Got a I mean, it's construction 101. you got a $4,000 repair. A contractor needs $4,000 to fix it. We're going to pay him 3200 and where's the 800 come from? And now well, he's sitting out there uh, with uh, an unpaid uh, again, bill. Again, no, that's why I'm wondering mm -hmm. whether we will get to a point where we're in the lowest income units and the oldest units, and they say, I'd love to replace that, and I'd love to apply, but I know I don't have $800 to start the project. Would we pay the full 4000 and then them pay us back the 800 over a 10-month period. I don't know. I'm just saying you might get to a point where you need to do that right. if you really want to see <laughs> yeah. the right units repaired. And that's the kind of thing is, we'll I think yeah. we'll discover. We'll yeah, yeah, exactly. That's all I'm yeah. saying. You're <laughs> thinking uh, further. I mean, I continue to think further down the line to what I think, like, in the long run really needs to serve this community that does involve, I think, the loan aspect to this mm -hmm. and, yeah. you know, will require a whole... A whole, different, a whole different set of Once regulations about mm -hmm. how we underwrite loans and and those kind of things, yep. um, which I, I hope <laughs> comes to fruition. I <laughs> you know, you know I continue to advocate because other communities are doing this oh, right go, now yeah. in their housing Pretty authorities. Sure. So I don't think it's quite as heavy a lift as it may feel. As like, oh my God, we're gonna how are we gonna take that on? Like a, yeah, a copy and paste. I, I'm hoping might be. I'm just saying it's down potential because that will also help us access additional funding outside of what we would put on the table in this community That's to make right. that happen. We need to um, make there's, it. there's an ability to put the, a lien on that property too until hmm. they until it's taken care of. So yeah. that's easy enough to yeah. do as well. I mean, I if just sort of envision this board may get to a point where we like appoint a subcommittee mm -hmm. of people not sitting at this table, maybe John and Carson <laughs> and other smart people like you gentlemen, you know, <laughs> to, to recommend that program, what that program would look like for APSHA. I mean, I appreciate that, Rachel, because if we're doing cat one, if we're doing lower categories, we're giving up to five grand towards something, but that something could be 15 grand, right. you know, and so it's someone who makes no money, definitely doesn't have the 10 grand in the bank, and then so that repair is not gonna happen even with a little, a third of the assistance, so. Yeah, this is a great conversation because it's a wellspring of other ideas and mm -hmm. areas we need to explore and things we need to find out. I, I know I've mentioned it before, but I think that a real deep dive into how appreciation can be used in the future is important, but so often for a first time buyer, they've put everything they got into getting in and closing costs and insurance and maybe they did some small repair and then now now the roof is leaking and, and it's gonna be hard for them to come up with the next thing in that first year or two, the year four years because you have so little appreciation you've gained. You can't really even go into a bank for a second trust because you've gained so little appreciation, you know. And so I, I think there's ways that I thought, we, what if we make an appreciation bank and, you know, people could borrow against their appreciation for those basic repairs or things like that. I mean, it's a much bigger conversation, but I think it's somewhere we need to go because you look back on those appreciation sheets 
um, year to year, and you look at those zero years and those 1.5 years that that's all people were allowed for appreciation, and you just know the cost of the, the ovens still went up that year, the cost of carpeting still went up that year, you know, and those prices are sticky. They don't really come back down very well. So we'll find out a lot. Thank you. I just had a question. So uh, for the categories, just so I understand this, the, the category match is not based on the category of your unit. No, it's right. based on whatever oh, category you do your partial requalification at. So it's right now, not when you bought your unit. Got it. That's good. Um, and upon us sending you on your way tonight, you'll create an application. We, we don't know those questions, what kind of things are going to be last or looked at yet. Yeah, we haven't gotten to that okay. point yet. So. And I, and I'm not sure we will get that before... Then the next time, hopefully, you approve it. I'm not, I'm not yeah. sure you're going to see the I think first, like approving, requesting funding, yeah. some of those steps. This is second reading. Right? Mm, I think it's yeah. first, though. No, this is first. This is. Okay. This is just her update. Right. This is just yeah. talking so. about. And then we need to go this actually ask for the right. money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think the, an actual so application the is a while down the road. Yeah. Well, I move that you go okay. ask for the money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I can assure you, Pickens' request for money will come with input on the. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. 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 And, and a lot of explaining. As well, it so should. Good, it's yeah. Good. We're getting a little, yeah. little closer to perfection on this. Yeah. No, if they I, say I, no I, to the money, it will come with Pickens' input <laughs> on this. So, you know. But I, I do have to say, I think it's important to move this forward in a timely fashion. I mean, as we all agree, but I, I got a call from a member of my HOA board just asking me about the program and when could people apply because she'd read about it in the newspaper. And so people are kind of chomping at the bit and wanted to know. And I explained that it's really for interior to units, not the bigger capital exterior and things like that and so on and so forth. And she said, well, that's great because we just found out that all the electric panels in our units are, 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 are not up to code. And they were not up to code when they were installed 60 right. years ago. Okay. And, and, <laughs> and all the free markets had the same problem. We only found out when we started to get some parts and trying to replace them and this and that and she goes I think all the old condos in town have the same problem too but they're about three thousand to five thousand each to replace mm -hmm. so we'll be notifying people to just turn off their appliances if they think it's arcing but we're lucky because our buildings are all cement <laughs> and I'm like what <laughs> So, so there will be a lot of people. We're all category four. That's so mm -hmm. we're not going to come in for this. I mean, don't think twice about it. <laughs> but it's a sign of what well, you're going to find out there. Let's see. You could have people who are category one in a category four. Yeah, that's true. Right? That's true. That's true. It. So they, that, that I might think be everybody should apply anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, just so we know. What and we're this is about. this is one where uh, I think this is going to be extremely popular. And so the you know how are we going to Sort it out mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. fairness. How are you going to sort that out? Fair. I mean, that's that's this is one that I think is. I guess the only other thing I would say is, um, so we're not doing any sort of asset verification. I mean, that would be my only other thought. Is I mean, are we comfortable if yeah. somebody's got a hundred thousand dollars in the bank and they're asking for five thousand? I mean, are we comfortable with that? I mean. I I think we were from the pilot program point of view, just to make it a bit more streamlined, but that is, you know, it is a bit more of a philosophical question for you guys. Yeah. Is that a fair statement, Liz? Yeah, I mean, I would say I mean so. from work, work wise. We talked about it a yeah. little bit, yeah. And we, you know, for a pilot, we said we wanted to keep the work streamlined and not do that, but. I but think it's a smaller, small enough dollar amount. Right. Yeah. And you're requiring Imagine. some big, yeah. some equity. Um, into the project, and the goal is to at least make a dent in, in our units that you know the inventory we've got, right? So yeah, I think otherwise, they don't apply, they don't take advantage of it, right? That's going to continue to we be a problem. We didn't want those barriers to entry, yeah. you know, that's a, just another that's a lot more work from staff yeah. to, to look at that, and it's a barrier to entry. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and if this grows and expands, that can change, but for the pilot program. We wanted to keep it streamlined and keep the, the amount of work yeah. for us to, uh, to be reduced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. The, yeah. Big, the biggest issue, and, and you know, we've got, you're going to have people probably do that have the resources to be able to do stuff. I mean, th this goes back to just housing in general, but mm -hmm. 
owners owners of housing should be stewards of their housing, right? Stewards of our program because they're benefiting from from something. Take care of your unit. Do things. If you can't afford it, do you know? Come to this program. But that's the mindset I think you've got to get people to, to get to the point. It was like, if I was lucky enough to take advantage of it, I want the next 20 people to be able to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I would agree that I think it, it's best for the efficiency of the getting this program out the door, that we don't ask for a full requalification. But it's only for the pilot program. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and that's when we can take right. a real look at how exactly. it comes out. Yeah. I do think, as you said, uh, Carson, there's going to be a lot of applications and how they're sorted out. It's, it's going to be, I, I do not think a first come, first serve yep. would be the way. But maybe there is a, a time period when the applications come in and literally a lottery again or spin it and pull out the 10 applications who win. Mm -hmm. and take it from there. But, uh, you know, there's got to be something that makes it randomized and equal and not just a right. timeliness issue on, on this program. Mm -hmm. Or is it that, or is it the what the what the, 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 the repair? repair is. Right. Yeah, yeah, well, that's, that's, the that's something we should uh, talk about. Hot water heater. Nobody has hot water versus somebody who. Um, well, that they have we a crack just said that we didn't think that was like that. should be for, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I wonder if we could have. I mean, people could assess that in their application, mm -hmm. right? Of like, this is like I can't live in my house, you know, versus. That could be something yeah, that people is, could self-rate on right. the application, one to five, how, how extreme is yeah. this, or something mm -hmm. like that, how timely. But we do need to, the, the form itself, the application will tell a lot, because mm -hmm. that could be a good way to prioritize, and we need to tell people in advance that that's how we're prioritizing the applications that come in. But <coughs> the scary part there is, you know, picking winners. Right, and well, all that's, of a sudden, that's, that's we already have, have an issue with 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 the, the program or APSHA, you know, and yeah. you know you've yeah. got but some distrust. But if you, that's why I'm saying you have to have a clear criteria printed beforehand. Right. You can't be subjective after the fact. It has to be objective that the the applications will be scored based on need, mm -hmm. based on uh, the crucialness of the repair or whatever. But that's just something for us to consider working through in this work session type format. I, may, I mean, maybe, the, maybe the, the application just has, from an asset standpoint, just boxes, just to check. Almost like a personal financial yeah, Almost statement. like, just Bracket. tell me, right? So let's go to Tom real quick. He's got, a, he's got his hand up. So yeah, you're, that is the, is the perfect lead into the reason I raised my hand. And that is to address process. I mean, if you're prioritizing uh, and if you're, if some people are going to get turned down and not get the money, what are there, how are you going to deal with uh, challenges to the decisions that have been made? So the first question is who makes the decision in the first place about whether somebody's qualified, then who makes the decision on priorities? And do you, if it's not by the board, do you need some sort of an appeal to the board about being uh, excluded oh from participation? Oh, no. <laughs> Well, that's why I was saying, put them for. all in the barrel <laughs> and yeah. pick out 10. That, that would be the easiest you know, way to do it. Yeah. You'll get Thank one you, or Tom. two that don't mm -hmm. need it. you get five that do, you know, but you're not going to have that. Yeah, issue. but, you know, even if that does happen, that's good information that, yeah. that it can be challenged. I mean, hopefully we won't. Uh, I think to some extent we were relying on the skill and judgment of the staff to look at the different criteria and see what kind of things were coming in and, and mm -hmm. then come back to you guys and say, you know, some of them are very pressing, some of them are long term, some of them are this desperate, you know, and we suggest for future reference either a lottery or an application or something. I mean, I think we were trying to keep it a little uh, yeah, undefined I think, I think, to see it I think actually it has what we to have. Be, I think it has to be prioritized by critic, you know, what's critical. This but then another, again, but then you're relying on you know, <laughs> us to decide, or how do you decide? So I think initially you can rely on us. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. got to be. Yeah. Prior to, and that's another one where, you know, because I think about this, report it to the report it on our website. You know, we got yeah. 25 applications. We spent, you know, we we approved 10 of them, and here's the here's what was repaired. Yeah, I, I agree. And the main thing is that you you had uh, either a written criteria or a score point criteria. That is something objective. You know, I'm thinking of how things had to go through the growth management quota system in the past, but it had to go through something. But you need something to rely back on should you be sued. 
But the other thing I think is worth kind of bearing in mind is it is only a $5,000 grant, and how much does somebody want to invest in a lawsuit because I got turned down on a $5,000 grant that I was going to put 20% into? So, you know, some things will happen, some won't, but, you know, it is good to think them through. It just is a matter of having um, clear criteria for established from the beginning. Awesome. One thing I wrestle with is um, the nature of the thing that went wrong um, being based on, you know, like neglect versus age um, as yeah. well. So if yeah. you poured down, you know, coffee grounds in your sink for five years and then you had a burst pipe, I feel like that's different than like I can show on my inspection six things that were unsafe, but I wasn't going to not buy the house, you know. Um, so I don't know how you play with that but if the whole point is to not is to be encouraging upkeep and that we're addressing the fact that some people have willfully neglected or caused harm then how like is that one of the check boxes and how do you how do you make it a check box um so that's come to mind i almost think you have to do first come first serve and have and like application reviewed and, and complete and meets criteria mm -hmm. and moves on for this one because i agree i don't know how else you start saying one's more important. The, I, I'm glad that we're not calling it as much emergency as I think we were when it was first brought because that always confused me. Like in emergencies, there's county assistance, there's your insurance, there's all these things. I think what, we're like that next level down of that leaking roof that we keep talking about, or that ceiling, that you know mold that needs to be addressed, whatever these little things are. So it's not emergency um, or else the timing of a lottery or of a application period all of that would be moot like you have to take care of it so I can't wait to figure out what you um, like to see what you propose for process yeah I think next steps we could flush out more of a prioritization process then whether whether or not I mean it seems like you all threw around three different ideas, a lot of ideas. So, <laughs> so I mean is there a way you're all leaning towards that you think makes the most sense for now Well, I'm, I'm leaning toward criticality. Yeah. That's even a word. Um, it's now. I just made it up, but, <laughs> you know, what's most important? What's the biggest issue in pay, you know, helping, you know, whether it's heating issues in the wintertime or whether it's a really leaky roof that's creating mold problems or, you know. Yeah. Um, so I do it's think it should go mostly towards more critical need and I think there might be a way to, to rate that at, at having an established criteria that our, our staff or whoever the review entity is can look at. Um, I, I, I don't agree with a first come first serve yeah. approach on this. I just, you know, I think it's more it should be an open window, see which ones are complete, see which ones are eligible and judged by that criteria and then um, you know, if there's 25 that are in the criteria and there's only money for 20, you pull them out of a hat, you know, uh, and, and just have an application period that people get in, but not that you're in on the first day means you got the grant. Mm -hmm. That is how I would look at it. I mean, most it. grants have a deadline and a process, right? right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and they're all put in the same batch, but. I think that's a good point. I think this is, I mean, we're going to do at least 40 is kind of what we're thinking. Um, I think this would be something you just, you know, set out a time frame, two weeks, a month, whatever, and then evaluate. Yeah. But I do think that the idea of prioritizing the most critical, I mean, right, but that, I guess, what I, it contradicts what I just said of if they're that critical, if yeah. you've got a two week to a month process, does that make sense? I, I want to think about it a little since I don't absolutely have to decide right now. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will, I wonder if, um, is there some opportunity for a retroactive um, grant? So like somebody who this, we would decide it's really critical and they had to like put the five grand on their credit card but really can't afford that five grand on their credit card. Um, but we would say, yeah, this is really critical and we would have covered this grant for you. Like is there a period of time that we might? Go backwards. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> that's, a, that's a hard thought. That's right? enough one. You know, you know the the thing is. I mean, it could you know it could yeah. be like with not, not that off, far off the grant period, but 
yeah. enough where it, you know close enough where it's like oh like this would have they expended in it in the us, past 45 yeah. days or something um i would take a look at that i it, it does create some challenges i guess but um what i'm thinking of is like when people apply to rent a unit at truscott and it's not a first come first serve basis they take applications for a period of time and then look at who had the longest work history and then they offer the unit to that person so that's kind of what i would be proposing i think on this period is it's yeah. just that so you take all the applications in a period and yeah. then you sort them out based on some standard criteria i think we'd probably get on like a two-week cycle and see what was coming in yeah. for those two weeks and carry go from on there that. yeah yeah that's how i would look yeah. at it but again yeah. it's just not first come first serve. right mm -hmm. yeah. so some and I think you have to meet all the criteria. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It has to be a legitimate just application. First come, first serve, mm -hmm. no matter what, you know. No, no. But it, 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 it just takes away the emergency nature. But I think we're agreeing that that's what gone this is. Anyhow. Yeah. yeah. Right. Great. Yeah. All right. Should we? Any other questions? No, I think that covers it. So I'll be able, plenty of room to make edits. And, and then we'll come back. Um, yeah, then will we come back for another discussion? And then? hopefully you'll like? say that's good enough. Mm -hmm. um, we can go talk to the... Just theoretically, maybe yeah. is it something that could be circulated uh, like as an information oh. memo so we could look at it and people could send comments back yeah. to you and, yeah. and yeah. might be able to move to preparing a first reading yeah. type of thing without yeah, so having to have another idea. work yeah. session. We could definitely do that. Yeah. yeah. So we'll, and we'll if we need we. another work session, we do. Yeah, we'll yeah. Find that's out. true. Too. Great. Yeah. Well, then that's yes. it. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks for being here. All right. Next item on the agenda is public hearing of resolution number one, series 2023, approving changes to APTCHA regulations. So this is a public hearing for resolution number one, series of 2023. It's a resolution of the Aspen County Housing Authority Board adopting amendments to the Aspen County Employee Housing Regulations. There are two items that were approved at first reading and moved to public hearing. Those items are relating to Table 6 in the APSHA regulations with regards to the maximum annual APSHA adjustment. It's based on 3% or the consumer price index, whichever is less. The consumer price index that we were always using was from November to November which we do not get the November until the middle of December, so we never knew what the um, actual increase would be for the following year. So we're requesting that we now go from July to July. So by August, we'll, everybody will know what their increase is going to be starting in January. Um, that's better for budgeting. That's better for a lot of the other landlords out there as well. The second one that we brought forward that was approved at first reading has to do with the ownership application fee. Uh, what we were we were experiencing a lot of issues with our home trek system uh, when we allowed for what each person when they did a brand new qualification packet that they got one free bid. Uh, that's basically five dollars. What we what we recommended and was approved was that that be re removed. So when somebody does an application um, and they're placing a bid, they they just have to pay that additional five dollars if they want to bid at that time. And then it's five dollars afterwards for sub subsequent for, bids. For, for every for bid, every it would bid. just be five dollars. You wouldn't get a free one. It'd just be five dollars per new. bid. I thought I was. I haven't seen it, but I wasn't here last time. Let's talk about it. Did we no. talk about it last we, time? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I missed that. That, I mean, it was I'm okay a, with both of them. And it, I like the first a, one. It was a, like, it was a home truck issue, right? A lot of it is a home truck issue. It, yeah. And there's a lot of people who want to just turn in their application. They want to do an updated application. They may not bid for months. So we have to somehow keep track that right. they get a $5 free bid. This way, it's, it's, um, uh, it doesn't take us that much. It doesn't take us an additional time uh, to, to work in the home track system to uh, address that issue. Um, some people, all of it's, it's, it, we've just found that, that it, it costs us more than five yeah. dollars to, <laughs> to do that. And um, that's something that we haven't changed in a long time either is the, the bid for each one. It has been at five dollars every time you bid for many, many, many years now. That hasn't, that's something that we haven't changed yeah. in our fee schedule. I'm supportive of the change, um, but the language kind of. Do we is need a motion to discuss it and all that thing again? Um, 
we could. <laughs> um, well, and this is uh, first reading. You have to have public hearing. This is public first. hearing. So as it's well. a little different. So, um, what, I, what I was going to say is it's just a little confusing with the language. Um, ownership application fee um, and then the ownership bid packet, it doesn't say that you have to have an application fee before you can make a bid. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they both sound so similar. I, I, I don't know how to separate it out. You know, the ownership fee, fee, fee it's payable upon submission of the application, whether or not you bid is what you just told us, that you, you, a lot of people put in an application, pay their fee, but then don't bid for six months. And so, but by mentioning bid packet in that first one, I too, see what you're saying. it so just gets confusing. Payable upon submission of application and of actual, it should be just of an, of an um, ownership application. Right, and then it's a $5 per bid. Right. Well, packet. you should probably Or whatever the language is, we need to clean it up a little. Our, in a, an accepted or approved application, you yeah. know, a, a approved bidder or something. Yeah, yeah, and then it's per bid well, they amount still, payable they, upon submission of a um, applicant, you know, someone who has a completed application form, you know, something along those lines. But well, when they turn, when they turn, first of all, we try to not accept them unless they're totally completed. Right. It's, it sometimes takes three or four times, but we do ask for that fifty dollars up front because we've had people where we've gone all through the application. And, and then they we've spent time after time after time and sometimes hours and hours on that application to get all the paperwork and then somebody says oh never mind and they haven't paid their fifty dollars yet or they ask for their fifty dollars back and it's it's no matter what when somebody turns in an application um they for us to look at it it it's fifty dollars okay we need to put the words non-refundable in there right mm -hmm. after the words ownership application fee yeah, have clarification questions about that fee as well. Is this a right time for that, Carson? Um, do we typically do public hearing and then discussion? We can do discussion. Usually okay. a lot of discussion before okay. the public hearing. Okay. Um, or questions to staff. The ownership application fee is one time when you apply f you, you put in all your information to after the first time saying like, hey, I want to start bidding. Mm -hmm. You pay the 50. Um, you don't win that whole year. You requal, but you mm -hmm. don't pay fifty again the next year. Yes, you do. Every time you requal, it's fifty dollars. It takes us just as much time the first time as it does the second time. There are times when it might take us a half hour to an hour to do one. There's times where it might take us three, four, five hours to look at somebody's application. So it's a fifty-year subscription to access to exactly. bid to AppSure yes. units, and then five dollars for each stream for each bit. Yeah. <laughs> for, to preview each show we also um. do we also do a lot of things going through we have to verify the bids there's a lot that karen does in the home trek system to make sure has everybody provided everything are they updated are they in the top priority um then we once we get the the uh, lottery ready so we can send it out to people like on friday so they can see if they're in the lottery uh, we make sure that we have all the names in there and if they're in the top priority or if they're if they're um, in a second priority or whatever. So, so that all takes us time. Being that that is, I think I know the answer to this next one, but if someone has bid, they've paid their 50 for the year, it's calendar year, it's annual, is it calendar it's their year? It's when their application Their anniversary, is, okay. Yeah. So um, then, and then we have two other times we require information. Yeah, we require information after January, 31st of every year we require their w, uh, w2s from the previous year we do not charge for that okay unless their their time is up where they have Got to it. do a new app and then after the april 15th or 18th whenever the taxes re are due the, we require that as well and again if they just did their application or whatever there's no additional fee for that okay. um if you've done that you're in your anniversary year and then all of a sudden you want to start bidding as a couple and or opposite mm -hmm. you, you put in your application as a couple you've broken up is that a it's separate another, it's 50. A we look at it as a brand new packet, as a brand new applicant, so it's an additional $50. Okay. So I, um, I think that this is about as high as I would go. Um, and I think the $5, if that's a, if that's easier to streamline, I completely understand removing, striking what we're striking. Um, I know it hasn't gone up in a long time, but that is pricey. And it's pricier the longer you're a loser. <laughs> so um, I think, yeah. Getting it at five? Yeah. What's that? Leaving, Leaving it, at it at five? Yeah, yeah. 
50 bucks a year, no matter what, $5 for everyone that you're qualified for that you want to go in. If you switch your situation yeah, in some way, Term to win another 50. 18, 18 years. years. Yeah. You spent $1,000 to bid in AFSHA. No, just to just have the right to bid. Right. Plus $5 every bid. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree with keeping the fees where they are. And we're not we're not we're not I, asking yeah. for us yeah. to increase the fees. I know. At least I not know. at this point in time. I know one yeah. point in time you wanted but to you go did through say and we see it, raised but, the fees for but, but <laughs> we haven't. But we. I just wanted to bring it up that we <laughs> haven't <laughs> raised them in a really long time, okay. and this isn't asking for an increase. All right. Okay. Public comment. Uh, we'll open it up for public comment. Feels like there's a big. Doesn't demand for that. Anyone online? No one online. So, okay. Um, there is a recommendation here at the uh, the end of the uh, of this item in the packet. If anyone wants to make a motion. I'll make a motion. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve resolution number one, series of 2023, requesting amendments to specific sections of the Aspen Picket and Housing Authority regulations as stated above. And with the recommended changes by Rachel? The recommended changes by Rachel um, after the public hearing that was held on March 1st, yeah. 2023. All second. And it's a roll call vote. Oh. Okay. John? Aye. Rachel? Yes. Carson? Yes. Allison? Yes. Kelly? Yes. Great. All Thank right. you. I would make a motion to go into executive session for a conference with the APCHA attorney for the purpose of receiving legal advice under Colorado Revised Statute Section 24-6-402-4B regarding the 1994 settlement agreement with Centennial Aspen three Aspen two limited partnership United States District Court civil action number 92 B 2570 and I would like to invite the assistant city manager Diane Foster into our executive session a second Kelly you second it mm -hmm. okay Kelly yes Allison Yes. Carson? Yes. Rachel? Yes. John? Yes. We'll okay, we'll take a five, five minute, minute break here for grassroots to uh, shut it down and we will go into executive session. Great. And I hadn't sent an email around, but I.